Ladies and gentlemen, meet the brand new 2013 Land Rover LR2. There's a new engine under the hood, there are new lights, and guess what? We're gonna take it off-road and see how it does here in the Canadian wilderness. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Right, so it's got quite slippery down the next section. So obviously you've got the hill descent control on, which is yes. good. What I want to do is just speed it up a notch so that the car doesn't try to go too slowly. Okay. So if you press and hold the plus button, just uh, just give it one, that's lovely. Oh, too much, too much. Bring it down just to the end of the green line. And another one, and one more, just that's it. But it's just enough to, uh, to help guide the car down, but not too much to hopefully uh, cause it too much slip. Keep it in the ruts and just trust the car, let go of the brake, and uh, it'll guide itself down quite happily, but it is slippy. Like a pinball, Colin, like a pinball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've just ran down the hill, and my co-driver, Colin, gets to drive the LR2. Land Rover was kind enough to set up this rather challenging and icy off-road course for us to experience the car at its wintry best. So here comes Colin, let's watch him come down the hill. Wow, I'm not sure uh, that the hill descent control was on because he was coming down pretty, pretty quick. Let's go find out. Let's ask him if he's uh, a bit nervous about that descent. Did you have the hill descent on, man? You flame flying down that hill. The whole, the whole thing was hill descent, no, no feet on the pedals. Really? Yeah. Uh, you were doing like 15 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, you okay? Were yeah. you worried? No, no. It's just that I, if you break, then... You lose control. Then you lose, the, the, the wheels just carry on going and then you have no control at all. So. You know, I've shot a lot of video and I was afraid <laughs> because you were just careening down that hill at me. Sorry. Good job. So you may be wondering what's new about the 2013 LR2. Well, to start with, the headlights are new. It now has a signature Land Rover line that runs through the lights. There's also a new grill. On the back, there are new taillights, but perhaps most importantly, there's a new engine under the hood. Now, if this looks familiar, it's because it's the same engine that's in the Evoque a 240 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder that puts out 317 newton meters. I don't know what that is in torque, we're in Canada, but I will font it once I figure out down here. In the rest of the world, you can get this vehicle in a diesel version, but in America, we get the turbo with a high-speed automatic as the only choice. All right, you guys are from where? From Argentina. And we don't get the diesel in America, so how does it drive? But yeah, in Argentina, yes. Yes, I know, but not in America, so how does it drive? Fine, excellent. Fine? Excellent, excellent. Good excellent. power? Power, yes. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? It's, it's, we feel the powerful in drive, okay? My English is very, very bad. Your English is excellent. No, no, I, I speak <laughs> like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Now the LR2 competes with cars like the BMW X3, the Audi Q5, and even the Volkswagen Tiguan. So what sets this car apart from the competitors? Well, Land Rover will tell you it's the command driving position and the stadium seating for the passengers in the back seat. Now Land Rover has a system which is called Terrain Response, and you can set it for snow and ice, you can set it for desert, you can set it for forest, and the system anticipates the kind of traction you're going to need. Now we just took the car off-road and uh, it did very well in some slippery and muddy conditions. Tell me about the uh, terrain response system that it has. Okay, there's four modes on the uh, terrain response uh, and it controls accurately the uh, the traction to each of the four wheels through the uh, the Haldex is, is the main heart of that 
system which is uh, on the rear axle. So does this car mainly a front wheel drive car that then can allocate wheel power from the front to the back and to the left to right? Is that how that's that works? correct, yeah. Normally on a, on a road you get 80% uh, of the uh, the power goes to the front wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the capability to push a lot of that power to the back wheels once we start to lose traction um, in off-road circumstances or when we're on the snow and ice. And uh, is this something that your buyers use or is this something that's more of a marketing tool or I, both? I think a lot of our buyers will take their vehicle off-road, yeah. um, maybe not frequently. Now we know the LR2 is very capable when fording a few feet of water, but what happens when there's a lot more water? Luckily, Land Rover has thought of that and they provided us with a ferry. It's Marty Padgett. How are you, Marty? I got bacon grease in the car. I'm wiping it off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how is the LR2 at fording a river? <laughs> I haven't forded one yet. I also <laughs> can't afford one. So <laughs> How about the lake? <clears throat> I didn't do the fording. He did. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about, I was talking about this one. It seems very capable. <laughs> oh, this river. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be steering the boat at this point. <laughs> The LR2 obviously isn't a sports car, but we're gonna do real world testing. And we're gonna see how fast it goes from zero to, well, 100 kilometers, no, 60 miles per hour at sea level. I have another passenger in the car, so there's two of us in here. All right, Solo DL is set up outside because the windscreen of the LR2 has little wires that help it defrost and it doesn't pick up the signal. So here we go, just going forward. Turbo is cooling up. There is 50 kilometers, and here comes 60 miles an hour. All right, what do you think that was? 9.02, 9.02, which, you know, for a mid-size crossover that's really not meant to be a speedy race car is respectable. You know, I'm impressed. The LR2 drives very well. It's very buttoned down. Um, it's not harsh. I have a good sense for where the wheels are. Uh, the steering is direct. And of course, it has that classic Land Rover trait of the high command driving position, which makes you feel like you're sitting on top of the world. I need to spend a week with it to really get to know the vehicle, but from an initial drive, it seems to do quite well. The LR2 was introduced back in 2006. You might know it as a Freelander, and since that time they've sold over 300,000 units. That's a lot of cars for a small company like Land Rover. It feels like they've upgraded the car over those years. It feels like they've kept continually improving it to make it more of a premium vehicle than when it first started out. With the latest upgrade, Land Rover has moved the LR2 upmarket. I have a heated steering wheel that looks like it came out of a Range Rover. The materials that I touch are soft. In fact, all the controls are right out of an LR4. It feels much more expensive. It feels much more refined. Now, of course, the big question with an LR2 is reliability. And that is a tough question to answer when you're on a one day initial drive of the new car. So I'm gonna have to leave that for a longer review. <laughs> well, snow tires or not, you can get a car sliding. You okay or are you? Yeah, uh, yeah that's fine. You sure? You yeah. look like you were a little nervous there. Yeah, I was a bit. Yeah. <laughs> You better get some speed to go up that hill. Yeah. Go for it. Check 
Shall I take this? the traction control? Uh, yeah, the, uh, this is not a traction control, this is a DS, D, E, F. Yeah. And yeah. now, we're going to go a little bit backwards. Okay. <laughs> I almost fell going up this hill. It is very icy. All right, attempt number three, going up a very slick bit of road. Here he goes. Nice work, Colin. Thank you. Yeah, it was good work. So it's not like a Wrangler, I mean, a Wrangler would just eat this alive, and to a large extent the LR4 will eat it alive too, just because you've got air suspension, you can raise the car, and you can get a lot more confidence that you're not gonna hit anything. On the other hand, would you wanna drive 300 miles in a Wrangler, especially with off-road tires? You know, that, that's something that, that probably wouldn't be that comfortable. All right, this is where I normally drive, this is where my head is at, this is where my feet are at. It's not huge back here, but you knew that, I mean, it's, a small entry-level luxury crossover that's very off-road capable. If you have a small family or if you're an empty nester, if you have a small family or if you're an empty nester, it's plenty big. LR2 starts at $37,000 and goes all the way up to about $42,000 depending on the package. On the TFL scale of buy at least it, rent it or forget it, I'm going to give it an I don't know because I've only driven it for a couple of hours so you'll have to come back when we have some more time to spend with it. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Remember, subscribe for a new car video every day. See you next time.